All right, now that we talked about how to evaluate the inverse secant and the inverse cosecant functions with the calculator, uh, let's go ahead and talk about how to evaluate the inverse cotangent function with the calculator. So uh, we're actually going to start this the same way we started the previous two videos, but we're going to see that it's going to end up being a little bit different, and then we're going to talk about uh, why it's different and why that might be a slight issue, and then why it's not actually a problem, and then what we can do about it. Okay? So first of all, notice that uh, inverse cotangent of x is not the same thing as 1 over the inverse tangent of x. Okay, so uh, just like um, in the previous two videos we talked about this, um, and also we do know that the inverse, or sorry, the cotangent of x is 1 over tangent of x, so we might expect this to be true, but this is actually not true. The inverse cotangent of x is not equal to the reciprocal of the inverse tangent of x. Okay? So watch out for that. Uh, likewise, cotangent of x is cosine of x divided by sine of x, but it is not true for the inverse trig functions. Inverse cotangent of x is not equal to the inverse cosine of x divided by the inverse sine of x. Okay, so be very careful about that. So um, what we are going to do, though, is relate inverse cotangent back to the inverse tangent some other way. So let's start this the same way we started the other videos. Inverse cotangent of x has range. The way we defined it, it has range 0 to pi like this. And remember, we talked about uh, in one of the earlier videos that you can actually define it to have a different range, and that's something that's going to be very important here. Okay, cotangent inverse of x has range 0 to pi. And again, if we interpret that as an angle, so remember, we can take the cotangent of some angle theta and get some number x, or we could take the inverse cotangent of some number x and get some angle theta. So when we say inverse cotangent of x, we can interpret that as some angle theta. And if we interpret that as an angle theta and we want to graph that somewhere in this range, 0 to pi, what's that going to look like? Well, so here it's rounded parentheses, so it doesn't include 0 and it doesn't include pi. Okay, it does not include either. So from 0 to pi like this. Okay, so here's 0, and then we can go all the way around and get here's pi over here. So 0 to pi, so that range looks like this. Okay, 0 uh, to pi, everything up here. Okay? Now that's inverse cotangent. What about the inverse tangent? What about the inverse tangent? Inverse tangent of x has range negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, like that. Okay? So what does that look like if we were to graph that? Well, that, so again, we can interpret this as an angle, and if we were to graph that as an angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2, that's going to look like this. So here's negative pi over 2 to 0, and then 0 to positive pi over 2. So if you saw the previous two videos, you may notice that something's a little bit different here. Uh, in, when we did inverse secant with inverse cosine, they were both in quadrant 1 or in quadrant 2. When we did inverse cosecant with inverse sine, they were both in quadrant 1 or both in quadrant 4. Now, here's the problem. With uh, inverse cotangent and inverse tangent, uh, they're either both in quadrant 1 or inverse cotangent is in quadrant 2 while the inverse tangent is in quadrant 4. That's actually going to complicate things a little bit. So what's actually going to happen is that uh, the result that we want, uh, based on the previous two videos anyway, the result that we might expect, uh, inverse cotangent of x equals inverse tangent of 1 over x, uh, this is actually not true in general. Not true in general. The way we defined this uh, inverse cotangent function. Now, some people do some people do define the inverse cotangent function to have range negative pi over 2 to 0 union 0 to pi over 2, like so. Okay, some people do define it to have that range, and then when you graph it, uh, if you were to graph something like this, um, instead of having 0 to pi like that, then what you would have is this. Okay. And notice that uh, these two do match up. So if we were to graph, uh, or excuse me, if we were to define the inverse cotangent function to have a range like this instead of how we did over here, then it would be okay. Okay, but we didn't do it like that, so let's not go down that road because we didn't define the inverse cotangent function like that, so we're not going to go down that road. Okay, so we're not going to do that. Now I want to point out that uh, even though that inverse cotangent is in quadrant 2 while inverse tangent is in quadrant 4, there's still a way that we could do the same thing we did before and make it work. But the problem is it's going to make it uh, more complicated and we're going to have to break it apart into two cases. One case where we're 
in quadrant one, and the other cases where inverse cotangent is in quadrant two and inverse tangent is in quadrant four. So two separate cases, and we're going to get two separate results. And it's going to be, it's really not confusing, but it's more work than we need to do. Now, what actually is nice is, uh, remember a few videos ago, we talked about some properties of inverse trig functions. And what were some of those properties? Inverse cosine of x plus inverse sine of x equals pi over 2 inverse secant of x plus inverse cosecant of x equals pi over 2. And here's the one that's going to be uh, really useful to us. Inverse tangent of x plus inverse cotangent of x equals pi over 2. Because we defined inverse cotangent to have this range here, the way we defined it, inverse cotangent has this range here, um, the way we defined it in one of the earlier videos, uh, it turns out that this actually is true. This is true right here. Now, if we had used the other range up here that we already erased, if we had used negative pi over 2 to 0, union 0 to pi over 2, if we used this instead, uh, this would actually not be true. Okay. This would actually not be true down here. Uh, this would not be true if we used this range instead. So it's a good thing we used this range, uh, 0 to pi, because now, since this is true, we can actually use this to evaluate the inverse cotangent function on a calculator. Okay. So notice here, uh, if we take this equation and subtract inverse tangent from both sides, um, what do we get? We get inverse cotangent of x equals pi over 2 minus uh, the inverse tangent of x. And this, we'll put a big old fluffy cloud around that because that's important. So this is actually what we can use to evaluate the inverse cotangent function. Okay, so notice it is a little bit different from the result we got in the previous two videos. And you might be wondering, well, why couldn't we do something like this with those? Well, notice how these match up. They, um, it's inverse cosine and inverse sine. This, is, this first equation is not helpful because both inverse cosine and inverse sine, uh, they both appear on a graphing calculator. This second one is not useful because inverse secant and inverse cosecant, uh, both of them do not appear on a calculator. Okay, neither of these are on a calculator. So the second equation is not helpful in this context. However, inverse tangent of x, inverse cotangent of x, this one, inverse tangent of x, does appear on a calculator. Inverse cotangent of x does not. So really, only this equation is useful in this context. Okay? So that's why for the other two, uh, for inverse secant and inverse cosecant, we couldn't really do anything else like this, because these two equations are sort of useless for that context. Okay, but here we do have this property, which is nice. And again, uh, we only have this being true because of how we defined the inverse cotangent function in one of our earlier videos. And again, if we use that other range, this would not be true. However, this thing here with the quadrants would work out uh, more nicely. And actually, it would work out exactly the same that it did in the previous two videos. So if we did use the other range, negative pi over 2 to 0, union 0 to pi over 2, uh, if we did use the other range, then actually it would be true that inverse cotangent of x equals inverse tangent of 1 over x. In that case, it absolutely would be true. But since we didn't define it like that, we're not going to go down that road. And instead, we're just going to use this here. Okay, so I do want to point this out. And just be very, very careful of how inverse cotangent is being defined. Uh, depending on you know, your instructor or your course or your textbook or whatever's going on, you might have inverse cotangent defined with this range or it might be defined with this range. So just be very careful about which, uh, what range you have there because it does affect which property you can use. So since we went with the range 0 to pi, uh, we're going to use this here to evaluate the inverse cotangent function. So let's erase all this stuff here. And let's do some examples. So just three simple examples here. Really can't be too bad because all we're going to do is just toss a bunch of stuff into a calculator. So uh, example one, inverse cotangent. of 0 0.87. Okay, and remember the domain of the inverse cotangent function is all real numbers, so we can take the inverse cotangent of anything we want. That's also pretty nice. So on the surface it might seem like inverse cotangent is more complicated, but actually it's so much better uh, because this, um, this is a little bit simpler because we're not taking any reciprocals of anything. It's just uh, pi over 2 minus another trig function. And actually inverse cotangent and inverse tangent the domain for both of these guys is all real numbers, so we don't have to worry about domain restrictions. You can take the inverse cotangent or the inverse tangent of anything you want. So that's wonderful, that's great. What we do have to worry about though is make sure that we're in radian mode, unless we're explicitly told not to be. 
Okay, so well, actually, before we go to the calculator, sorry, uh, inverse cotangent of 0 0.87 using this uh, rule here, that's going to be pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 0 0.87. Okay, so then that's going to be approximately equal to something. So now let's go to the calculator. Again, we want to evaluate pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 0.87. So let's go ahead and do that. So uh, diamond T for inverse tangent on a TI-89. Um, and then that's going to be... Actually, before that, we want to do pi over 2 minus... So pi over 2 minus inverse tangent of... 0 0.87. Whoops. I'm just a mess over here. 0 0.87. Okay, so that's going to be approximately uh, 0 0.8548. 8548. So this is approximately uh, 0 0.8548. Okay, so that's example one. Two more quick examples. Try to be a little better about using the calculator here. Uh, example two, inverse cotangent of negative 23.48, for example. So that's going to be equal to uh, pi over two minus the inverse tangent of the same thing, negative 23.48. So this is pi over two minus the inverse tangent of negative 23.48. Okay, so let's go ahead and toss that into the calculator. So pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of negative 23.48. So we'll come down here. Okay, so uh, we want to do pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of negative 23.48, was it? Yes. Okay. That's approximately 3.0990. So we'll say 3.099. So this is uh, approximately 3.099. Okay, so that's example two. One more example, just to kind of solidify the point here. So example three. Inverse cotangent of 147.7. Why not? So using this rule, it's going to be uh, pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 147.762. Okay, so that's really all there is to it. But again, it's, we can use this simple uh, formula here because of how we define the inverse cotangent function. So we define it to have this range. So again, be very careful about that. Uh, do you want to point that out again? Okay, so let's go back to the calculator. So we want to do pi over 2 minus inverse tangent of 147.762. So we'll zoom in on this again. Okay, so we want to do pi over, whoops, pi over 2 minus the inverse tangent of 147.762. That's going to be about 0. 0.0068, let's say, if we're going to round to four decimals, 0 0.0068. So this is uh, approximately equal to 0 0.0068. Okay, and that's pretty much it for evaluating the inverse cotangent function with the calculator. And again, be very careful about what the range is. If the range is 0 to pi, you can use this formula here. If the range was uh, negative pi over 2 to 0, union 0 to pi over 2, then you can use that formula that's similar to the other formulas from the previous videos, then you could use this. Okay. But we didn't do that in this video because when we defined the inverse cotangent function in an earlier video, we used this range here. Okay. So that's how do you evaluate the inverse cotangent function along with three quick examples there.